How much responsibility should Gareth Southgate take for this defeat? Lots. Because they were too negative. I mean, they were super negative in this final. I mean, the, the criticism of him in his tenure has been he's, he's, he's too pragmatic. Now, it's brought them an element of success in terms of a semi-final and now a final, but ultimately there's, there's no trophy. Mm. But the pragmatism came back to haunt them because pragmatism became negativity, it became defensive, it became uh, lacking cohesion, it became ball retention was terrible. Maguire just pumping it up the field, yep. and long balls to Harry Kane. And, and you look at the team and you look at the squad and you look at the offensive players they have and they had no fill for them today. Uh, they were super negative. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was the best team that they faced in the competition, right? We know England had a, a pretty easy pathway-ish. If we people will shout at the TV Germany, Germany were not the same team. Jurgen Love should have been sacked after the 2018 debacle. He wasn't. They were never the same team. But England still had to do a job on them. They did. Uh, but look at the changes he made. You know, we saw the two guys taking the penalty. Uh, there was three took penalties substitute: Saka, Sancho, Rashford. Sancho and Rashford came on. In fact, at one point there was a concern yeah. if Italy didn't put the ball out, they might not have got on the field. Yeah. That's how late and how negative. Mm. In fact, Southgate had to make the changes along with Kyle Walker on a corner kick for Italy. That's how desperate it was to get them on the field. That's a big no-no, right? But what I'm saying is he made those changes for penalties only. He mm. didn't make a change before that to bring on a Sancho to win the game. Yeah. Why didn't That's he? Why, negative. Why did, why didn't he was he frightened. He's, he, he was frightened. But back to the reason why, just, you know, you, you were talking about Maguire just having to play the ball long. And, and the other day we were talking about, look, Rice and Phillips do a great job of that defensive role. Mm. But they're not the guy you're playing the ball into under pressure to turn and then play the ball forward. Right. So Italy presses them up. They're already in a defensive posture. They don't feel confident playing the ball into midfield to turn. Your, your speedy guys were a little too far back, so you didn't have an outlet for them down the channels. And you just got stuck in your own half. And then it was a long clearance. And then who are you clearing that up to? Yeah. Chiellini and Benucci? Yeah, they're terrible in the air, right? Sure. There are a couple guys that <laughs> can't bring that ball down and, and play out. And, and they just got trapped in, in what Craig's saying. is just this level of negativity instead of just saying, you know what? We can put some physicality on the pitch. We can put some fast guys. We can scare. What is the one thing Chiellini and Benucci don't want? Yeah. A fast player running at them with space. Yeah, but in order to do that, you have to be able and to have the, not the power, maybe the, the gut, if I may say, yeah. of having big choices to make. Right. So when you have a, a personal like Grealish, Foden and Mount who can turn, create something for somebody like Kane. You have to understand him, of course, Rhyme Sterling did great, but is he so, uh, do, you have to, or do you have to put Rhyme Sterling all the time? You know, that's yeah. hard to, to say, yeah. not today, I don't put you because I'm sorry, I know the defense that I'm gonna face, and I need people who can create, can give the ball behind the, the defense, can, yeah. can be a big nightmare to kill him. If, if you don't play five defenders, you could play Sterling and somebody else. It oh, doesn't sure, have to sure. be this either or right. kind right. of mentality. Maybe, maybe and, and Saka comes on, yeah. and, and it's well, almost it, as if at that stage. That so, when, when did Grealish come on? I mean, Grealish didn't come on till. Greg Grealish late. didn't come on till late. Extra didn't time, yeah? yeah. 99th oh, minute. Yeah, right, yeah. Grealish comes on an extra time. Saka's next, 71. Yeah, Saka came on quite early, uh, early-ish in the game. Yeah. And then the other two didn't come on... Uh, Until the last kick of the match. Yeah. Until the last kick of the ball. <sighs> at home at Wembley. Right. Yeah. I mean, come on. And then Southgate's already said uh, to the press, I take responsibility, I picked the people right. taking the penalty. Now, I blame none of these guys for missing a penalty. But we were saying when Saka come on, who's been good, it looked as if the occasion had... Yeah, it wasn't yeah. his best game. ...affected no. him. He was... He, he, he was struggling a little bit, yet he wanted him to take a penalty. The two other guys hardly got a kick, yet he wanted him to take a penalty. I'm not, I'm not sure if either of them actually touched the ball. Well, Southgate, uh, Rashford, Rashford made Rashford, a better right back. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but the thing, is, the thing is, we all know, and we saw the game against Spain, where Italy was in trouble because of the pressure that the opponent made. Right. Uh, Spain, they suffer. They didn't know how to, uh, to handle it. And you score a goal after two minutes, 
and you defend. You exactly go where they want you to go, and you defend, and you don't make substitution to make it better, to make, to make it more offensive. You don't sacrifice either Rice or Phillips to keep on going and give the pressure. You just wait, and you think, well, it's going to be enough. The uh, difference we... between the coaches, sorry, is, is Croatia World Cup semi-final, uh, getting outplayed in the middle of the park. Southgate did not make any changes that mm. were of any consequence. Today, getting outplayed didn't make any changes of consequence where, uh, even though he was winning, where Roberto Mancini uh, did. Look, and you know I'm big on this. Uh, UEFA, uh, by the very fact of the way they've structured this uh, tournament around Europe, and, and Alexander Seferin, the, the current president of UEFA, has said it's been a nonsense, it'll never happen again. Yep. Almost laid it on a plate for England. You know, and I know people are saying, Ma, you're saying that because you're Scottish. No, I'm saying it because it's factually correct. <laughs> Six out of seven games at Wembley. One game on the road against Cannon Fodder, which was Ukraine. The easy side of the draw, which was not England's fault. The decision that went Sterling's way. And now we're at Wembley at home. And yet, these supporters still see this negative performance from this team that has a lot of talent. Yeah. A lot of talent. And I think a much more experienced coach would have got a lot more... Out yes, Yes, defensively good and all that, I'll give you that. But you need a little bit more, sure. which Italy had, by the way, to win this tournament. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.